All right, I'm going to give you just a brief overview of how to do the um, activity with the Bohr model, which is this um, series of circles here, and bingo chips. All right, so in this activity, the bingo chips are going to represent our electrons. Okay, so um, for a given element, you need to take your periodic table and figure out how many electrons there are. So for example, if we're starting with hydrogen, hydrogen has one electron, that's its atomic number, we're assuming it's neutral, so it would have one. So we would need one bingo chip, all right? And we know that the middle is where our protons are, so that's where your electrons are gonna be attracted, right? And so we're always going to start um, on the smallest ring, all right, or the smallest energy level, okay? So for hydrogen, this is what your Bohr model would look like. <clears throat> All right, now let's talk about what core electrons are versus what valence electrons are. So valence electrons are the ones on the outermost circle that has electrons in it. So for hydrogen, this is our valence electron. It's the one that's furthest away from the nucleus. It happens to be pretty close, but that's all there is. All right, so we always have valence electrons. Valence electrons is always one or bigger, okay? And then core electrons are any electrons between the valence shell and the nucleus. In this case, there's nothing in between, all right? So we have no core electrons. So if we had something that had more electrons, let's say something like this. This one has four electrons, okay? So our first two went on the first ring, okay? Because that's closest to the nucleus. And then our next two went on the second ring. So our biggest ring that has electrons on it is this one here. So these two electrons are valence electrons. And then between there and the nucleus, we have two core electrons, okay? So this is just a model to help you figure out how many valence and how many core there are. You should also know by the time you're done, you should recognize a pattern on the periodic table in terms of being able to figure out valence electrons versus core electrons, and then the effective nuclear charge, okay? So effective nuclear charge is just how much of this charge in the middle these outside electrons feel, okay? So it's going to be the number of protons that you have, because that's the charge in the middle, all right? So for this particular element, it would be four protons, all right? But these electrons out here have some shielding from these ones in here. So to get an approximation of the effective nuclear charge, or the Z effective, you do the number of protons, four in this case, minus the core electrons, which is two in this case, to get um, an effective nuclear charge of two, which means that these electrons feel the equivalent of two of the positive charges in the middle because um, the others are shielded by the electrons in the core.